Jumping into the number five spot of the best PS5 headsets in every price range is the Logitech G435 Lightspeed. Coming in at that zero to $50 price point. If you wanna check out any of the five headsets in this video, there's Amazon links below, 40 US, UK, Canada, and international links, but let's talk about the G435 Lightspeed. The build quality on this headset is completely made of plastic, but I've actually had this for about a year now and it still looks brand new. So the durability here actually held up great. It's got a bunch of of great colorways. It's extremely lightweight at 165 grams, which is absolutely amazing for long gaming sessions, especially paired with the PS5, where more of the environments are more typically living room situations rather than a desk setup. Having a ultra light headset just makes you feel that much more comfortable in the space and ready to just game at any second, which is what I really think that consoles are better at than PC. Just pick up the controller and start gaming. You want your headset to match that. Now, even with this lighter design, the headset doesn't feel cheap as it still feels very well put together. The earmuffs also adjust in this really smooth, satisfying way. Logitech just did a great job here. But how is the sound quality? Obviously, that's the most important. Well, for $50, this is extremely impressive. And sometimes you can even get it for less when it sometimes goes on sale. So check the links below for current pricing. Bass response here is great, which is something you typically don't get at this price point. The sound is full and a emotional in game, especially if there's background music or explosions going off. The troubles and mids are very slightly muddy, but everything is really well balanced. And on top of all of that, the directional sound is great. I absolutely love gaming with these. Definitely my favorite wireless headset under 50 bucks. For controls on the left side, there is power, volume up, volume down, a mic mute button, and then a USB-C for charging. For connectivity, obviously this is wireless with a 2.4 gigahertz USB dongle or Bluetooth. So you can actually use this just to like listen to music on your phone. The dongles range here is unbelievably good. Going through multiple walls and a floor a good 50 feet away. As for battery, I got around 24 hours of usage here. And like all the headsets on the list, they connect quickly and seamlessly with the PlayStation 5. They were not included on this list unless they didn't have any connection issues with the PS5 and it integrated very, very well together. I think that's one of the most important things, especially with a wireless headset for the PS5. Now comfort here is absolutely incredible. And this is really due to it being only 165 grams. They are crazy lightweight. My ears fit inside of the muffs and they have great padding and texture, but it doesn't press hard against your head, but it also doesn't feel like it's gonna fall off. Part of this is due to the weight, making this seriously like one of the most comfortable headsets you're ever gonna use. You really don't even feel it on top of your head. It's that good. For super, super long gaming sessions all night, this is literally no problem. I can wear these all day. Now the only downside and the Achilles heel of this headset is the mic. It's just not great. It doesn't have a dedicated boom arm, so it is an integrated mic, although it does have kind of a little bump out, but yeah, the mic doesn't really sound good, but don't take my word for it. Take a listen to the mic test. This is the mic test of the Logitech G435 Lightspeeds. Check, check, check. One, two, three. And that is how it sounds. But make sure to stick around to the end of the video when we do a back-to-back -back mic test of all of the headsets. But with that, let's move to the $50 to $100 price point, which is the Razer Barracuda X. Build quality here is a good middle ground between durability, understated styling, and a well-put-together headset. It has metal bands, a plush leatherette headband, and soft breathable fabric earmuffs. So sweating during long, hot gaming sessions isn't a problem. As well, there is a detachable mic that feels very premium, and it's very easy to adjust and stays exactly where you want it to. And I do mean the actual mic arm. You just twist it. It's not flop city here. But let's talk sound quality. How is it? Well, it's actually great. It has a very balanced sound profile with great low frequency or space. Bass is punchy and deep without being overbearing or super muddy. Mids and trebles were clean, not muffled and not overly sharp, which is something that they sometimes do to overcompensate for maybe not as high quality of drivers, but this one, it does a good job. It's very balanced. Directional sound here is great in game, whether it's footsteps around you or bombs going off or bullets whizzing by. Great for playing games, but also really enjoyable to listen to music for. Now I don't wanna make it seem like it's some amazing audiophile headset. Yes, it's not gonna get really, really far up that frequency range on either side, but for what it is, the bass is good, the mids are balanced, 
and so are the trebles. And overall, that's really what you want. Now for controls on the left side, there is a mic mute button, volume wheel on off button that doubles as your mode selection button, a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, so you can use this wired, which is awesome. And then a USB-C for charging. You can also download the Razer audio app on your phone for changing EQ settings and seeing battery life. Now let's talk connectivity. Most of the headsets on the list are gonna be wireless because I think that's what integrates best with PS5s, but not all of them. But this one is wireless. We have either Bluetooth connection or a 2.4 gigahertz USB-C dongle. You can also use this wired with a 3.5 millimeter cable. Also after testing, this got around 60 hours of battery life, which is great. But is it comfortable? Well, yeah, it actually is. They don't press too tightly against my head. The fabric earmuffs keep it cool during long, hot gaming sessions. They definitely are not too heavy at 250 grams. Not as crazy lightweight as the Logitechs, but that is definitely not very common. And the top band of the Barracuda X is super plush. Really enjoyable to wear for three hour long plus gaming sessions, even if you wear glasses wear. And to wrap it up, how is the mic quality? Well, it's pretty just like right there in the middle, but don't take my word for it. Take a listen to the mic test. This is the mic test of the Razer Barracuda X's. Check, check, check. One, two, three. And that is how it sounds. But with that, let's move on to the $100 to $150 price point. This is the Razer Kyra Pro Hyperspeed. Razer really dominates the market in that above 50, but below $150 price point. So the build quality on the Kyra does get a bump up when compared to the previous headsets. This is perfectly designed to complement the PS5 aesthetic. The earmuffs have a fabric interior and leather exterior. There are Razer RGB logos on the ear cups, real brushed metal accents and metal adjustable bands. It's built really, really well. Surprisingly, with all that added metal, the weight is actually balanced quite nicely still, having a very comfortable experience on the head. But sound quality and implementation is where this really, really brings it, so let's talk about that. This brings the sound quality to the next level. The bass is exactly how I like it, very deep and rich without being overbearing or boomy. You can definitely tell, especially with the low frequency response, these are higher quality drivers. If you enjoy listening, to music and watching content with your headset as well as gaming, this is great for that added depth and clarity of these higher quality drivers that I really enjoy. So in game, directional sound is great definitely a step up from the previous headsets. This also does have Razer's HyperSense, which is a haptic feedback in the headset. This can actually be quite fun in game as it feels like you more feel punches. Like when you're laying down suppressive fire, you can just feel that da -da 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 in your head and it's kind of cool. Now, one thing to note here is that we tested every single available Razer headset and there's three that currently offer HyperSense. This one was the least aggressive variation of the three headsets, but it can still be quite intense if you're in a pretty big firefight or there's a lot of sounds going on and you have this set to the highest level. It is kind of something fun to play around with and show you friends though, so that might be worth it. Is it gimmicky? Yes. Now for controls, on the left side, there is a mic mute switch, volume wheel, power button, and a USB-C for charging, and then you get your detachable mic. Then on the right, there is a button to switch between the dongle and Bluetooth connections, a game chat balance, and a button for adjusting that haptic intensity, and it's very, very easy to change the intensity and quick, also, it can be turned off just by cycling through that again. So it's very easy to turn that on or off, which I do think is a big, big part of how well this feature was rolled out on headsets. It is quite easy to not let it take away from the experience if you don't want the haptics. As for connectivity, this is obviously wireless with a 2.4 gigahertz USB-C dongle as well as Bluetooth. This also has a claimed battery life of 11 hours with haptics and RGB and 30 hours without the RGB or the haptics on. So the battery life takes a hit here, but you're getting significantly better drivers. Those crisp trebles are gonna sound significantly better. It's just more clear. And then you get that deeper, better bass response here. So the battery life is not great, but you're also getting a hell of a headset that is basically perfectly optimized for the PS5. But yeah, the battery life is a little bit lower, especially in this price point. But let's talk comfort. Well, the comfort across the entire Kyra lineup, this is the top obviously, but it's great. Like I mentioned, these have a leather exterior and fabric interior for those earmuffs, which is very supple and comfortable, but it's also 
a feature that's great for trying to keep out as much environment sound as possible, but also not make your head too hot. And that's what that design does. So I do like that Razer does that on quite a few of their headsets. The fit is great here. It fits my head perfectly. It fully seals around my ears and it's very comfortable for long gaming sessions. Really no complaints at all. Full pass on comfort here. The mic quality here is good, but don't take my word for it. Take a listen to the mic test. This is the mic test of the Razer Kyra Pro Hyperspeeds. Check, check, check. One, two, three. And that is how it sounds. But with that, let's move on to the $150 to $200 price point, which is the Corsair Virtuoso Pros. For the build quality, Corsair did an amazing job here. Tons of metal throughout the metal ear cups with that classic Corsair triangle cutouts and the Corsair sail logo looks super premium. Like seriously, this looks like a very cool, like skeletalized design that I am really digging. Even the rotating of the ear cups feels premium. The fabric stitching and finishes look great and feels very high quality. The detachable mic arm has fabric along it, which is awesome, along with that triangle design, and then everything else is, again, metal. That is awesome. This, again, has a metal band for its adjustability. And it also comes with a hard carrying case, so if you do travel with it, this is definitely protected. You don't want to scratch that metal, even though it is extremely durable feeling. I also do wanna note, this is my personal daily driver on the setup that I use most of the time currently, so I really like this headset a lot. However, it's the only headset on the list that is not wireless. But with that, let's talk sound quality because that's its best attribute. These have great sound quality. These really surprise me coming from Corsair since they aren't known as like an audiophile style company, but they really knocked it out of the park with this one. Now in music, these are super rich with a little muddiness with the trebles, but very, very minimal. This is one of the best sound qualities in this price point. For the low frequency response, they have great deep bass, especially for an open back headset, which it is more difficult for open back headsets to have that really large amount of bass. So they did a great job. The drivers here are high quality. Music sounds fantastic, very rich and full, but let's talk gaming. These are open back headsets which means you can actually hear more of your outside environment. So that might be a deal breaker for some, but if you do live in a quieter house uh, or you have your own private room where you're gaming in, these could be a great option. Open back headsets kind of pull out that sound stage. So rather than your traditional headset that might feel like it's shooting that sound directly into your ears, the sound stage kind of opens up and it feels like the sound is coming from maybe out here for gaming and music it sounds really, really phenomenal, and that's my preferred style of headset, which is why this is my daily. However, in-game, these are amazing, tuned literally perfect out of the box. These are really quite exceptional. They are super clear trebles, fantastic bass and low frequency response, good mids. They're just so enjoyable for gaming, giving both that emotional side of gaming, but also having great directional sound. And since these are wired, these are obviously going to have the edge up in terms of audio quality because it's lost less audio. And me being an audiophile, my daily is typically always going to be a wired headset, unless I'm obviously in the process of testing headsets. But yeah, when I daily one, it's going to be wired. So for those of you who want the best audio quality and don't mind having not wireless headset with a PS5, which I do understand is quite a bit more work, this is probably going to be the one. Although the number one spot kind of gives you everything. For controls on the back of the mic, there is a mute switch and that is it. That's all you get. For connectivity, it comes with a few different cables. The first is a detachable 3.5 millimeter Y split design that plugs into both sides of the ear cups. Then there is the same design with a detachable mic that plugs into the left ear cup. And you also get a 3.5 millimeter adapter for split mic headphone connections on a PC. The cables feel extremely premium with nice rubber and metal accents on the ends and a very tight woven design that really does feel like a very, very premium cable. Now for comfort here, it's great. I wish the top padding was a little bit more plush, but that's really nitpicking. The fabric earmuffs are nice and plush. It sits nicely on my skull and has a really good seal. It is on the heavier side, but it's not too heavy, especially with how they designed the ear cups and the force that it takes to press in that foam. I think they did a really good job balancing it. However, the space between your ears and the drivers is fairly shallow, so my ears do hit that fabric covering, but they are nicely padded, so it's a non-issue for me. Now, for the mic, this is great. Very clear and doesn't peak with plosives. Don't take my word for it though, take a listen to the mic test. This is the mic test for the Corsair Virtuoso Pros. Check, 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 
One, two, three. And that is how it sounds. But with that, let's move to the 200 to $250 price tag. This is the Logitech G Pro X2. Build quality is fantastic here. And I think one of the coolest looking like luxury headsets. It literally looks like a Mercedes Benz. There is this extremely expensive looking stitching on the top band. The adjustable metal bands are super thick and the metal pieces that attach to the ear cups themselves feel extremely solid and have great swivel. You then have this thick coiled cable on the left and right, which looks great and this machined metal looking Logitech logos on the left and right again. I've also had this headset for almost a year now and it still looks brand new. So durability here is great. And on top of that, you also get extra cloth ear pads in the box. So if you don't want the leather, you can do the cloth. Although I actually really prefer the leather as it's super, super plush. As for sound quality, as you expect, these are great. They do a great job of balancing clear, crisp trebles, great mids and awesome low frequency response. The sound in game is great. Not only does it give you that emotional side with a deeper punchy bass, but you still get that competitive advantage having great spatial awareness. Footsteps are crisp and easily deciphered directionally. Not only this, but listening to music with these is great as well. So if you did want an all around great wireless headset, not only for the PS5, but literally just everyday use listening to music on your phone, this is a great pick. Although kind of a baller pick, right? It's not the cheapest on the list, but it does give you that luxury experience. For controls on the right side, there is a power on off switch. And yes, on off switch with LEDs in there, which looks great. I way prefer switches to hold and press buttons. Don't like that, this phenomenal. There's also a volume wheel, mic mute button, USB-C for charging, Bluetooth pairing and mode switching button, and then the detachable mic. Then on the right, you get a 3.5 millimeter jack for your Y split design. For connectivity, this is wireless with a 2.4 gigahertz USB dongle, Bluetooth, or a wired connection with a 3.5 millimeter connection. As for battery life, this is pretty wild, but they claim 50 hours of usage, but after testing, we literally got ours to 90 hours. So I don't know what was going on there, but the battery life here is really, really good. Now comfort is, I think, pretty obvious just from looking at this headset. This looks extremely comfortable and it feels exactly that way. These definitely are heavier at 345 grams, but the weight is dispersed perfectly, causing no fatigue. The top band is extremely plush. The earmuffs are super plush and it sits perfectly on my skull with a great seal. Long gaming sessions, even when wearing glasses, is not a problem. Really great job from Logitech. Now my quality, similar to Corsair, is just not as good as I would want it considering the price tag, but that's just most wireless headsets regardless of price, but don't take my word for it. Take a listen to the mic test. This is the mic test of the Logitech G Pro X 2s. Check, check, check. One, two, three. And that is how it sounds. But with that, let's move on to the last and final most expensive price point for the best headset for the PS5. This is the $250 to $300 price point. And these are the Audis Maxwell. You can finally get these in stock. So they were considered for this list and absolutely they topped it. These things are really phenomenal. As for build quality, this thing is hefty. Coming in at a massive 490 grams, this is a tank of a headset but also surprisingly comfortable. Like the way they designed this is very good. The ear cups themselves are made of plastic with a top band being completely made of metal. The brackets that connect the ear cups are also made of metal and the ear cup swivel feels very premium. The adjustment for the top band requires a bit more force to pop in and out However, if you don't share your headset, you can just set it and forget it. But sound quality is the reason that you would buy this headset. Now I am an audiophile. I spent $10,000 on a surround sound system. My eyesight's not great, but I can hear the entire frequency range. And immediately when listening to this headset, you can tell the drivers are of a significantly higher quality. They get louder very quickly, especially with explosions in game, making the audio reproduction on these extremely realistic. They have a phenomenal upper range frequency being extraordinarily crisp and clear, as well as having great mids. Imaging out of the box is fantastic, and in game it makes you feel like you're there in person. With that being said, out of the box, the bass is not at all what you're going to expect. The first time I actually got these out of the box, I was like, okay, the trebles are unreal. They are very, very good, but it doesn't sound good. It just doesn't sound great at all. Like music did not sound good. So big thing is 
This doesn't ship with the right EQ presets. I highly recommend playing with the EQ on the app to get the most out of this headset. Once you do that, either change it to the different presets or just making a custom EQ. It's obviously not difficult. Once you do that, you can tell how unbelievable this headset is. I increased the bass pretty substantially and that really made these come to life. The sound of these being a wireless headset is truly top of the tier. It is the top S tier for sure. If you want to experience amazing separation of instruments and vocals in music or know exactly where your bullets or footsteps are coming from in game while still getting that emotional side with really clean bass response and dreamy mids, this headset is absolutely amazing for that. This is on an entirely different playing field than all of the other headsets on the list. Not that any of those are bad, but this one, while it is expensive, has phenomenal drivers. Now for software, if you're wanting to change the EQ on PC, the software for us like had a lot of glitches and mess ups. So that is one con of this because for us, it was essentially useless. It just had so many bugs and glitches. However, you can change the EQ on the app and that worked significantly better for us. You can also change the EQ presets by double pressing the volume wheel and scrolling through, which is a really nice feature so that you don't have to go into that EQ app, especially on PC. Obviously it's a PS5 video, so most of you will probably use the app, which is a good thing because it's significantly better. I don't even highly recommend this. I'm like, if you're gonna buy this, you have to change the EQ. That is like a absolute must. But after you do that, it's like, it's freaking phenomenal. As for controls, on the outside of the left ear cup, there is a mic mute switch and then the power button. Then on the left ear cup, there is a wheel for volume and EQ presets, a wheel for game chat balance or side tone balance, a 3.5 millimeter input, a USB-C for charging, and then a button for noise suppression. The noise suppression is kind of like a active noise canceling, but isn't really phenomenal actually. But that's not really its point, so I'm not gonna knock it too hard for that. For connectivity, this is obviously wireless with either a Bluetooth or a 2.4 gigahertz USB-C dongle. You can also use this wire with a 3.5 millimeter connection with some of you might actually prefer to do as that's how you're gonna get lossless audio through these. Although to be very clear, the wireless connectivity on this still has amazing sound. You don't get any weirdness there. And as for battery life, this gets around 65 hours of usage. Now considering how good the drivers are and how large, because they're significantly better than any headset that I've used before, I think 65 hours is actually very, very good. But these are heavy, so what about comfort? Even with these being extremely heavy, they did a really surprisingly good job balancing that weight. The leatherette earmuffs are very plush and have a great seal around my ears. And the top band, even though it's made of that like rubber kind of looking leather or leather looking rubber, and it doesn't have any padding, it does a phenomenal job forming to the top of your head and dispersing that weight. Now it doesn't feel weightless like the Logitech G435. However, it's still very, very comfortable nonetheless. And I don't believe any of you will have a problem with comfort here. It's just, it's very comfortable. Now for the mic, it's a wireless headset, so the mic isn't absolutely amazing, which you might have expected for this price point, but yeah, don't take my word for it, take a listen to the mic test. This is the mic test of the Audis Maxwells. Check, 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 one, two, three. And that is how it sounds. But again, if you want to check out any of the five headsets in this video, there's Amazon links below for the US, UK, Canada, and international links. And actually, technically, it's a top six, but top six doesn't do well in YouTube's algorithm, so we're still gonna call it top five. So you get a little extra for free. This is the mic test of the Logitech G435 Lightspeeds. Check, check, check. One, two, three. This is the mic test of the Razer Barracuda Xs. Check, check, check. One, two, three. This is the mic test of the Razer Kyra Pro Hyperspeeds. Check, check, check. One, two, three. This is the mic test for the Corsair Virtuoso Pros. Check, check, check. One, two, three. This is the mic test of the Logitech G Pro X 2s. Check, check, check. One, two, three. This is the mic test of the Audis Maxwells. Check, check, check. One, two, three. This is a consumer tech review, and I'll see you guys in the next video.